Do you like dogs? I hope you do. Today I'm going to teach you how you can build this dog training center application using Next.js and Tailwind CSS. Okay, this is the app that you're going to be building today. Okay. Small animation, several sections, a slideshow, and a contact form that actually works even on localhost. I will teach you how to make it work. Fully responsive, of course, and here is how it looks on mobile. And let me open the navigation for you. You can scroll down. You will get all of these sections one more time, of course. Plenty of negative space. And that's pretty much it. Okay, let's set up the project by running this command. TypeScript no, as lint yes, tailwind of course, the source won't be necessary, the app router yes, and I do not want to customize any defaults. So this is going to install all the basic packages that we need, and as we progress we'll be installing more packages that are going to be necessary for the specific uh, custom components that we will also build. Installation done, let's cd into the project. Press enter. I am now inside this project. Let's type code dot, press enter, and it opens the project inside Visual Studio Code for me. Let's continue. I went ahead and added a couple of images inside the public folder. So the dog icon that we are going to use in our logo type and also the dog that is going to be our background image for our hero component. I also replaced the existing favicon with this favicon that you see here. I have also created the components folder inside the app folder. If you open it, you will find all of the custom components that we are going to need throughout this project build. But each component only contains the initial code. So if you want to have access to this initial code and the images, all you have to do is to check this video's description where you will find my GitHub repo. So let's move on. Okay, I am inside my GitHub profile page. I'm going to go to my own repositories and I'm going to open the dog school. You can clone this or you can simply download the zip folder and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to download the zip folder. Here it is. I'm going to double click it. This can go away and I'm going to open this inside Visual Studio Code. I had prepared this for you, but I now decided that I do not want to start by importing the navbar inside our root page, inside our home page. I want to start with the hero component. So let me change this really quickly. Also important to mention is that I have extended the theme colors. So I added this custom blue color that we'll be using throughout the project. So you will find this inside the Tailwind config file, okay? Time to run npm i to install everything. And after this is done, we can start our development server. So now you can type npm run dev and press enter. We can open the project inside localhost. And this is what we have. We see the favicon added and the first component that we see is the euro component because it's the one that we added inside the home page. So now let's really start building up this project by building the euro component first. 
Okay, let's start by adding an ID to this div. And this ID will be used for our navigation. Okay, discover, it's going to be the ID. Inside, let's have another div. And this div can be styled right away. And I want to give a width of 80%, so a custom uh, width of 80%. MX auto flex flex call. I also want to justify things to the center and items to the center also. And I want to give a padding 5 to all sides. Inside, I am going to have two things an H1 and a P tag. Okay, so let's start with the H1 and this. H1 will also have a span inside, but let's start by styling this H1 text 5XL. Uh, on MD, the text will be 6XL, bit bigger, of course. The font is going to be bold always. The font is going to be bold. There you go. Margin Y of 5. And I'm going to use the text wrap class. There you go. And I want to say unleash your, and now I'm going to use a span tag. And inside the span tag, I will have dog's potential. Just going to copy paste this to be faster. Okay. And I'm going to style this class name. I'm going to style this. Uh, the span I want to give a different color. So text slate 300. And what else? I'm going to need also a P tag below this H1. So this one, I'm going to need a P tag. And I'm just copy paste the text inside. So it's faster and I do not mess up. I'm going to style it class name. Text. It's going to be 1.2 M. OK, that's the font size on MD. The text is going to be 3XL. And then I want to give a margin top of 3 and a margin bottom of 10. OK. I'm going to format the document and as you can tell we have this section but and I can see already a problem it's fixed now I just rearranged this so there's no need to give margin left to this spam or anything okay so and now this is the result we start to see something but we do not have the background image with the gradient and all of that like we see here OK, and this can be accomplished with Tailwind CSS. OK, but to be faster, I use it the way that I know. And that means I added all of this inside a custom class inside the globals.css. OK, you can definitely use these properties and swap them into Tailwind CSS utility classes. But because this was faster, I decided to go with this. So all I have to do now is to add the hero uh, class to my div. So if I add now class name, and if I add hero and go to our project and refresh, I should see the result. And there you go. See, the same thing. Of course, we are missing the navbar, but Apart from that, it's the same thing. OK, time for us to develop the navbar. As you can tell, I have imported the component and I placed the component here so we can now develop it. OK, uh, but for developing this component, we actually need to install uh, at least two more packages. So, yeah, we need to install React icons, so npm react icons and we also need a package called react scroll okay so 
let's press enter wait until this finishes and continue we are going to need to use react hooks which means we need to change this component into a client component okay and i can go ahead and actually copy paste all of the imports that i know that we need for this particular component so pay attention that this link is coming from the react scroll package that we were installing and it's already installed okay and we can actually check that inside our package.json and as you can see these are the packages that we install it good but what i want to point out is we are using two links the typical next.js link component but this package also imports a link but i'm using as a scroll link so they don't conflict and so you can tell visually what link is doing what okay that out of the way let's work inside of the logic that we need for this uh, component as you can tell we will use use state and use effect inside this component so the use state will uh, allow us to create our initial state in this case for the menu icon okay so in the final version of course when we click we open the mobile nav bar and we display this icon when we close we hide the nav bar and display this icon so this is what we are doing with this so initially the menu icon is set to false because the nav bar is not open okay um, but we also want to use this use state for our sticky nav bar so if the user scrolls down scrolls vertically okay so scroll uh, y vertically up to a certain point 50 in this case we change the background color so this is what we are doing so we are using this state and this state setting both to false initially and when something changes we will change it to true and that will trigger a different behavior in our ui i have now updated this instead of a div i'm using a header and i'm using our custom color that we have defined inside the tailwind config uh, file okay this custom blue it's coming from here okay and i'm adding some other tailwind css classes with full the height is a custom 60 percent i'm using easy in duration 300 and of course i want my nav bar to be always fixed at the top so i'm passing this and i'm giving a z index of 10 so it's the highest z index in our uh, component and in our project also i'm adding also a margin bottom but now inside the nav tag and these tags are just semantic html5 tags inside this nav tag i'm gonna use my sticky okay this variable and i need to see if it's true or false of course initially it's false but when it changes to true and that will happen when the user scrolls down up to this position we set the the sticky to true and when the user scrolls up again we set it back to false okay so we need to uh render different uh css in case it's either true or false so that's what we need to do right now pay attention to this syntax so if sticky is true i want to add whatever classes that i'm about to type in here if sticky is false i want to add these classes so if it's true do this else do that now i want to further develop what's inside my navbar and the first thing that i want to do is to add my icon here so i also need to use this scroll link because this is going to be responsible for navigating in between the sections because this is uh, one single page so if you click it takes you to that specific section 
because we only have one page, it's always the home page, but we can navigate between sections, okay? So the first thing that I wanna do here is actually to grab my scrolling to wrap everything, okay? So I can navigate the user when the user clicks here, okay? So inside this, I mean, I can also, and I need to pass the attribute, scroll to, to where? In this case, to discover, okay? And this is the top section of our application, okay? And on click, I want to run this function because when the user clicks in here, I will open or close the nav bar and display the icon. So on click, on click, and we will test this when this is done. Maybe it's easier, okay? Just trust the process. So now inside, I'm gonna wrap everything inside the div, okay? This is going to be the parent div. And I'm gonna use this mainly to use Flexbox. So I'm gonna uh, use Flex and I want my items to be in the center. So they are all aligned vertically, okay? Now I'm gonna make usage of the image component and notice that all of this is already imported at the top, okay? And to be faster, I'm actually gonna copy paste this so I do not mess up and it's definitely faster. So all I'm doing is adding the icon. As you can see, it's visible now and that's it. Below, I want to add a span because in front of this, I want to add training center okay so i'm gonna add a span and style it okay so right after this image i can copy paste and boom there you have it see it's getting there i now added the larger screens navigation and this is true only for larger screens as you can see this uh, ordinated list starts as hidden and becomes visible only on MD breakpoint onwards. So this is not visible because it's hidden, of course, but if I enlarge, there's a, a breakpoint right here, and this is where this larger screen's navigation becomes visible. And of course, I'm styling all of this. So this means if we are on a large screen, we can now see this but we need to also display the icon for the small screen navigation and make it work. And notice the following, the, sc the scroll link, okay, that we are importing from this package also takes these properties, okay? You, you can play with these numbers and you can and must explore all of this on your own. So let's continue. I now added the icons for the smaller screens and as you can see, the icon is here, which means this icon is always visible up to MD breakpoint when it gets hidden. So basically when you display this icon, you do not display the larger screen navigation in the other way around. But up to this moment, all we are doing is to use this on-click function that is going to basically swap the icon for us when we click. So when it's not clicked, we get the usual uh, open menu icon, the hamburger icon, whatever you want to call it. But if you click, it renders the close icon. But this is not done because we, do, we need to render this icon, but we also need to open our mobile uh, view uh, navigation. So let's work on that. I went ahead and added this div for the smaller screens navigation. And this basically checks if menu icon is true or false. It is set to false at the beginning because that's what we are doing here. Okay. And when this icon gets clicked, we run the function and we basically change from open to close to close from open to close from close to open. So from this to cross, and from cross to this. And what I'm doing is just checking if menu icon is true. And if it's true, I add these classes to my UI. If not, I add these classes to my UI. And if you can check here, these are the classes that are actually responsible to hide 
the mobile view, the small screen view navigation. And that's really easy to spot because I'm actually using negative values basically, okay? But so let's see how this is coming along. So if I'm on a larger screen, I get this navigation, of course. And then if I shrink it a bit, I keep having it. Of course, the font size is smaller now, but when I reach a breakpoint which is lower than MD, I get this icon instead. And if I click, now not only I display this X icon, but the content of the small screen navigation. And if I click back, I'm going to close it. And that's it. So now we just need to work on the content that goes inside this navigation, which is this div right here. And there you go. I added a bit of code and this is now basically working in terms of UI. So if you click now, you will see the content. So this div here at the top is actually rendering the, the logo. This is super simple. So I'm not gonna spend much time covering this. And then you have your navigation links, okay? These links right here. And when any of these links are clicked, we run our handle smaller screens navigation, okay? Which is this function that we have right here. We swap the icons, we take the user to whatever section that was clicked and we close the navigation automatically. Now, if I click here, okay, I am closing because that's what it's doing, but I'm not getting taken to any of these sections, of course, because these sections do not exist yet. Okay, and I cannot really also uh, do the other part which is when I scroll down, I see the background color changing here because I do not have other section. So we now are going to work on the hero section. And once that section is done, we can come back and fully finish this navbar section and test everything to make sure that everything works like in our demo project. Well, as a second thought, I decided to add these services here so we can fully test our navigation. So now if we scroll down because we have another section, okay, we can see that the background color is changing because we are scrolling vertically like expected, right? And this is of course true on any other device size, okay? But the other thing is we can also test the navigation. So if I open this and because I, I went ahead and added this ID and remember I mentioned that we are using IDs in order to navigate to the sections that we want to navigate to and I just added this class uh, name temporarily so we can have like a big section. Let me close this, sorry. So we can have this big section so we can scroll and actually see this happening. So I'm going to get rid of this. But before, let's just click services because we have that ID connected already. And I click, boom, I am taken to services. And remember that our hero also got an ID, which was discover, I believe. So if I click discover, boom, I'm taken back to here. So when you open the navigation, you see the icon, and when you click the correspondent link, and you can check the bottom left, okay, you are taken to that section, and this will close automatically. So I am going to click here one more time, and there you go. Hopefully this is clear, hopefully this is not confusing, but now we fully develop it and test this, and before we go back to these services, we need to work on the section title here. Now it's time for us to work on the section title component. As you can see, we have several uh, titles uh, on our page. So we have this one, we have this one, we have this one, and so on. So they are very similar in terms of UI. Of course, the text inside changes. That means we need to build a component, but instead of 
calling the component multiple times, like we could, but that's not the best idea, we are going to build a component that we can reuse. And that means we are going to build a component that uh, accepts props. So I'm going to uh, destructure my props and I'm going to have my subtitle, okay? And my main title, okay? So my main title is going to be this bigger title and my subtitle is going to be the blue title, okay? Now I can work inside this div, I can style it right away and I want to say margin Y, so top and bottom, a custom amount of 150 pixels. It's up to you, you can change this amount, but I want to give a nice white area, so a lot of negative space. For me, this looks better. It's up to you. And I want to always put my text right at the center. There you go, okay? Because this is always centered, okay? So inside, I can have a P tag, and this P tag I can style it right away. And I'm going to use my custom uh, blue color for the text. So custom underscore blue. Okay. We saw this already. Text 1XL. Uh, font. I want to use the normal font for this one. Okay. And uppercase. And a margin bottom of 2. And this is going to be my subtitle. So I'm going to copy paste this. Okay and I'm going to put it right here. So this component accepts props. So when I'm going to call the component, I will have to pass the props, okay? Next, I'm going to have an H2 tag that I can style right away as well. And I'm going to have a text 3XL. Of course, I want the text to stand out a bit, a bit more so the text gets bigger and the text color is going to be black, okay? And the font, I want it to be extra bold this time, okay? And one more time, I'm gonna copy this, okay? And pass it right here, okay? So now that I created my component, I can go ahead inside my home page and call and import this component and use it. So page, there you go. I'm going to import the component, which is section title. There you have it. And I'm going to use it. Okay. And this component, as you, as you can see, takes two props, subtitle and main title. Okay. So now we just need to pass the props. So the first one is going to be believers dogs can learn. So do uh subtitle subtitle it's going to be this and then we well this is just the prop of course because i'm going to copy paste the text so believers it's going to be my subtitle and dogs can learn so actually i do not because i'm using uppercase i can just say believe as and i'm going to use dogs can learn. Let's see what this does. If I refresh, there you go. See, dogs can learn, uppercase, dogs can learn, because in here I'm not using that text transform, so I need to do it manually. Okay, coming along, okay, this is it. Cool, let's continue. Before moving on and building the services section, there's two things that I want to do really quickly. I want to update this. And as you can tell, in our final version, we do not have the browser's scroll bar, but we still can scroll up and down, of course. So I want to get rid of this scroll bar and I want to update this. So the first thing that I need to do is to go to, uh, to my layout file. And in here, I want to change this title to, uh, what was the name? Dog Training Center. So Dog Training Center with a capital C, come on. And yeah, there you go. And I want to get rid of 
this scroll bar. So for that, I can go to my globals. And this is the way that I know how to do it. And this is, I guess, the last time that we are going to be working inside our globals file. Yeah, I don't have anything else. And all I'm going to do is to copy paste some code that will remove that browser's scroll bar. You can check this on your own. OK, and now see we can still scroll and we do not have that annoying scroll bar. All good. So let's continue. And now really is time for us to build this section, which is our services section. OK, let's create the basic structure for our services. OK, so this div uh, actually uh, we are going to be using a grid and we'll start with grid calls one. So smaller screens on MD changes to grid calls two and on LG. I want to change to grid calls three. OK, simple. I also want to give it a gap of uh, five and the padding of eight to all sides. The ID is services for navigation as we did before. And inside we are basically going to have three, three cards. OK, so we could have used, I could have used uh, props one more time to make this component a uh, bit smaller and all of that. But I decided to go with the hard way per se. So it's up to you. You can definitely refactor this code to use props. It's not that hard, but we want to render this kind of dog card per se inside the grid. So once we do the first one, we can just copy paste the other one. And if you were using props, that will be even easier. OK, but I didn't do that way. So let's move on and do the way that I did. So I'm going to have three divs. Each div will have a class of relative. OK, and I'm just building the basic structure here. OK, and I'm going to format the document. Boom. So each div will have, of course, inside uh, a, 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 an individual um, an individual dog card per se. And as you can tell, of course, I, I went ahead and added the imports necessary. OK, I'm adding three images. OK, I'm not making these images available to you, but you can use your own images. It's up to you. So this is just an example. OK, so uh, the first thing that I want to do inside is actually to add an image. OK, and that's the first thing. Boom. There you go. Copy paste. This is simple. I'm using the image component. There's no need to spend much time on this. Then I'm going to have two more divs. OK, so that's the syntax. Two more divs, one div and another div. OK, and then the second div is where I will have because when we hover, see when you hover, you get this animation with this information with a call to action button that is actually not linking anywhere, but you could make it link uh, to wherever you want. So this is just an example. So let's just style this outer div. OK, class name. And this is going to be absolute. Absolute, OK, absolute. Make sure you type the class name correctly. Otherwise, it will not work, of course. Top zero, left zero and uh, bottom zero, of course, bottom zero. Right is going to be zero. Flex, flex call. Justify center justify center items to the center. So everything is nicely um, aligned. The text color is going to be white. OK, cursor pointer. So the user knows that can hover on top and do something. Padding of eight to all sides. I want the opacity to be zero on other. I want the opacity to be 80 
and you can explore these classes in case you are not familiar with them. And also on other, I want, of course, the BG color to be my custom underscore blue that you are familiar with by now. I want to use transition, transition all, and I want to use a delay so this animation is not too fast of 300. And I'm actually going to use view or drop so you see all the classes that I typed. Okay? Inside, and this is what we are building, so forget forget this obedience, behavior, and therapy because we are not building that. We are building what we will see when we hover, so this basic obedience, this blue background and this button, okay? So what I want to do firstly is to add icon here, but you do not see it yet because we are on a small screen. So larger screens, you add the icon, smaller screens, because the text is quite big already, you do not have the icon. So you don't see it here unless you are on a larger screen, but I'm going to add that icon right away. And for that, I'm going to copy paste. So let me see. So if I do not mess up, yeah, this is the one. And I'm adding this um, icon from React icons. Okay, we, we did that. Then I'm going to add the P text. OK, the P text, which is the basic obedience training text that we see here when we hover. Of course, each one will have different text. And then I will have a link uh, that is going to wrap the button to take the user to wherever you want to send the user to. In this case, I'm not linking to any internal or external page. Therefore, I'm just sending the user to the root. But you can change this href prop, of course. So um, if I refresh, let me see. There you go. So I see the image. And when I hover on top of the image, I see everything. But I do not see the icon because I'm on a, a smaller screen. But if I enlarge, I do see the icon. So now I just need to add that title here when not hovering this title like obedience to the top left corner. OK, and that is going to be done inside this div. So this is super simple. And I'm actually now I'm going to just do class name. I need to use absolute positioning because this is always going to stay there top in this case of two, uh, left of zero. So this is the top, this gap here. There's no gap on the left. That's what I'm doing. The background color, one more time, I'm going to use my uh, custom underscore blue color. The text is going to be uh, white, nice color contrast. I want the width to be 40% for this rectangle, 40%. But on MD, because I will have two cards side by side, I will have less room. Therefore, I'm going to decrease my width to be only 35%. If this makes sense, I want to give a padding tree to all sides, uppercase the text, a font uh, of bold, so it stands out uh, a bit more. The text is going to be aligned to the left, therefore text start. On MD, I want to swap and align the text to the center. And I want to give a rounded right LG. So this tiny bit on the right. So let's see if that worked or not. And I do not have any text in there, so we only see the UI. But I can write the word obedience o obedience it was and I can actually go here and format my document and as you can see it has worked so we always see this label and when we hover we see the animation kicking in 
and out when we hover in and out. And on a larger screen, we see the icon. So this is all good. Of course, we need three cards and they are all different. So what I'm going to do is because I already showed you how to build one. And once you know how to build one, you can build these two because all you have to do is to change the content, the text. But I'm not going to bother you with checking me doing that. So I'm going to copy paste and we will move on. There you have it, the three cards. And when you hover, you see the title and the call to action button. On larger screens, it's the same. And on LG, you see also the dog icon. Yes, I was using the MD breakpoint, but then I decided to change this and use LG instead because the text was quite big. So I want to make sure that you see the text and not the icon. So it will not mess up that. Coming along nicely, time to add another title at the bottom of this section. So let's do that. Here is the new title. I added it here. So now the next section is the dog trainer. So let's import, uh, what was the component name? Let me just double check. It was just dog trainer, correct. So we can go here and import dog trainer. There you go, into our own page. And we can use it right here and yep. There's some space there, unnecessary, there you go. And we'll see the dog trainer any moment rendered here. So we can navigate to our dog, uh, dog trainer, don't need this import. And there you go. So let's work on this. I'm inside my custom component. Uh, and as you can see, I am importing an image and the image component from Next.js because, of course, I'm going to need it. OK, so let's start by styling this outer div. I want to give padding of eight to all sides. Flex, flex, call. And on MD, I want to change this to flex row and I want to give the ID of trainer so we can navigate to this section and we can test this also and we should this one and the other sections to make sure that it's all working. Once inside we'll have two main divs, one for the text, the other one for the image. Okay, that's simple. Boom. So the first one I'm going to style it right away. I'm going to style it class name and the first one is the one on the left which is going to be the text. So the width, it's going to be full. On MD, I want to change the width to be only 60%, okay, of the screen size available. MX Auto to center things when the, the screen gets really big. I want to use Flexbox, Flex Call, because I want to stack things on top of each other. I want to use item center to vertically align things properly. And I want to use the text font size of 1.2 EM. Okay, so let's leave it like this for the moment. I'm going to give the basic styling for the other div where the image will live inside. So the width, it's going to be full. On MD, the width, it's going to be also a custom amount and this time you guessed it 40 percent because you make you you add 60 to 40 and you get 100 percent of course and then on md i want to give a margin left of five and this is only uh, on md uh, breakpoint onwards i want to use flexbox justify things to the center there you go and items to the center i think i can now format my document 
and I can start working on the image. Okay, this this div right here. So I'm gonna just copy paste this because it's just the image and I'm gonna paste this I'm gonna go view word drop there you go hopefully we'll see something my computer is really slow there you go we have the image okay on smaller screen the image is at the bottom text on the top we don't see it yet because we don't have it on bigger screens we get the image on the right hand side it's just an image that I'm importing I'm giving the width I'm giving a, a few classes rounded full to give this circular shape I'm giving a margin top um, and I'm giving these border colors okay you can see all I am doing so no problem or what or whatever inside this div we'll have plenty of text so there's no point for me to type any of this out I'm gonna just copy paste all of this and I'm gonna format my document it's this simple okay and there you go you have it so if I un enlarge the screen we start to see things so let's try to see if the navigation works Dog trainer, boom. Services, boom. Hero section, boom. So services, dog trainer, hero section. Yeah, this is definitely working. So let's try this on a smaller screen. There you go. So go to dog trainer. We were there. So hero section, there you go. Dog trainer, there you go. And services. So we now know for sure that everything is working up to this point. And we built almost everything. We need the footer, we need the... Oh, we also need the slideshow for the testimonials that we have here, but we do not have yet the component created. But I'm, I think we did like 60% of the project already. So let's continue. Time to work on the testimonials section right here. As you can see, I went ahead and added the title. Okay, there we have it. And below that, we'll have this slideshow. And this is done with React Slick. We have not yet installed that, so let me, let me first confirm that we don't have it, because I think we don't. Yeah, we have scroll, but we do not have. So we can, we can crush this one and clear npm i react slick this is the package name i'm gonna install this and then we will develop our uh, testimonials component so npm run dev there you go and i have already added it in here so we are good to go so we can definitely work on this. So because we are going to use this slideshow that is automatic or you can manually scroll it left or right, it's up to you. We need to change this component from a server side component into a client side component. Therefore, we're gonna use the use client directive at the top. We are also going to have two imports, okay? One is the image and the other one is the package itself. And we also need to import the CSS files for this to work. I'm not going to go over the documentation for this, but if you want to read more about this on your own, just look for npm react slick and you will find the documentation. Then, as you can see, we have a lot of dummy testimonials composed with image, the person that is giving the testimonial, the testimonial title and the testimonial message. So we do not want to manually <laughs> write all of this or anything. So what we want to create is an array of data and this array will contain several objects and each object will have this information for 
each of these people. So I'm going to copy paste this dummy data, OK? Because we're going to need it. We're going to need to map through all of this data. So I'm going to do word wrap. And as you can see, this is all uh, the information that we are going to use inside our testimonials. We have nothing yet because we haven't built the UI, of course. So now we can start doing that. So the first thing is, I mean, I also can and must define a few settings for the slideshow. And this is all coming from the um, documentation. So there's no point for me to spend much time on this. Of course, you can play with these numbers to see what this does. OK, so these are the properties that we are going to have in our slideshow. We'll be using dots, as you can see, by using the infinitive uh, Boolean of true. So the, the Boolean true for this infinitive property, the slideshow keeps uh, moving automatically. Then you can set the speed, how fast, how many slides per, how many slides do you see? Okay, how many you want to scroll when you scroll? So I'm defining one, always one. Autoplay true, okay, and uh, autoplay speed. So you can play with this and explore that. So let's right away now build the UI. So I'm going to start by styling this outer div with it's going to be full for larger for smaller for smaller screens like you see now I want it to be full but on bigger screens I want my max width to be different and that's a mistake already a typo on MD I want this to take only 80% and on LG I want my max width to take only 60% so the bigger the screen the the smaller this component will be horizontally if that makes sense mx auto to center things in the center when the screen gets too big and i want to give a custom and this is important a custom height for all of these uh, cards this this card okay because otherwise, depending on the content that you have here, the card will grow bigger or smaller and that doesn't look nice. So make sure to play with this number and adapt it to your own needs. But you need to define a custom height, in my opinion. The background color, it's going to be slate 100. So this light gray. And of course, I want to give the ID of testimonials you guessed it right because I want to be able to navigate to this section so I can refresh and maybe click I can click testimonials it's still thinking my computer is damn slow but it will work so let's go back to the code and in here we are going to firstly import this slider component so we are going to wrap everything inside this slider component. So slider, OK, it opens and closes. And I want to spread, pass and spread my settings into this component. So whatever I have defined in here will be applied to this component. So that's what we are doing. Then inside, we need to map through all of this data, loop through all of this. OK, and that's what I'm going to be doing now. So my array name is data because this is the typical convention, because most of the times you're pulling this data from a database. Uh, and I see an error and import. OK, yep, silly me. We are getting this error because I am trying to import something that I have not installed. So we installed this package, but we did not install this slick carousel package. So npm i boom install and this should fix my problem. 
So let's continue. So now npm run dev. And now if I refresh, this must work. Let's see if that's true or not. Back to business, let's use map to get access to our data. So data dot map, okay? And what I will be getting is going to be a testimonial, okay? And then I can simply uh, return right away a div like this. And this div will need a key. I guess that's the error. Yep. And this key is actually going to be the testimonial uh, dot image because each user will have a unique image. Okay. If you had an ID, you could use that instead. So I'm going to style it class name BG slate. 200 uh, I'm not really sure I, I better give an height of 450 pixels like I did here so they match in height I think this is necessary well we can remove that class and see what it does but I think it's necessary text black the width it's going to be full and a padding of eight what else do i need uh, uh, um i want to give i want to further style this so a margin bottom of let me where am i a margin bottom maybe a margin bottom of two i'm going to use flexbox Justify things to the center as usual and items to the center also. Okay, inside this div, pay attention where you're typing all of this. Inside of this div, we'll have two main divs. Okay, so let's add right away the markup one div, two divs, two main divs. The first one, I'm gonna style it right away. And the first one will contain the user image, but I'm gonna just style it. So flex, justify, center, items, uh, center, and I want to give a height of 28, okay? And as I said, inside I'm gonna have an image and I'm gonna just copy paste. So I am accessing my testimonial and then whatever image and that's it. I'm giving these classes nothing really impressive as usual. Okay. The lower div, it's where we'll render the name, the title and the content of the testimonial. Okay. So I don't need any styling here. All I need is a, well, a P tag. Yep. A P tag where I will be rendering my testimonial name which is the person who made this testimonial i'm gonna style it i'm gonna give a font of normal uh, text one excel margin bottom of six so i give a little separation and then i'm gonna have an h3 tag which is going to be my testimonial title i'm gonna style it right away class name margin bottom of two font this time needs to be bold so it stands out a bit better on md i also want to give a margin top of 10 and inside i'm gonna access my testimonial and my testimonial title there you have it and below that i'm gonna have another p and why am i getting this error Okay, I'm missing this. Yeah. There you have it. No. Now it should fix. So this P, the class name, not there, come on. This P, I'm gonna style it. 
class name. And this is going to be uh, on MD, a margin top of 10. There you go. And inside, now in the correct place, I'm going to access my testimonial, testimonial, and my testimonial message. It was, I believe, message. Let me see. Testimonial message. So now we can actually try to scroll to this section. And there you go. But I'm having a problem with the image somehow. So the image is not good for some reason. So oh, where is it? My computer is going nuts as usual. So I definitely made a mistake somewhere. It's not m image name image so why am i not image testimonial image so let me just crash clear npm run dev let's see where i'm going wrong some should be something obvious because i i cannot see where the mistake is it normally means something really 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 obvious refresh the page of course it was something obvious. Guess what? I added a path to these images that I'm trying to use here, but I never added the images in the first place. That's why I'm getting this 404 not found for these images. So all I have to do is to basically drag my images and this should now work. Let me see if it, that is correct or not so how many testimonials do I have one two three four so that means I am one image short and this should fix my problem and I now believe that if I refresh this should all work and I start to see stuff cool so this means it is working boom it's recompiled and we do see one two three well we don't see this guy for some reason four it's my computer is super super slow you probably can hear is noise in the background we now have four images all good so I need to stop my computer for now and then I'll come back to this and I will continue.